brownies and house spirits thread. Has anyone ever encountered such a phenomenon? What can you share? I live in a fairly old city in the north of Ukraine, and I have often heard stories from different people about brownies. I can add from myself that since the city is old, it is built on bones, namely, most residential areas are located on old rural cemeteries. We have a district in which two three story brick houses were built back in the Soviet era, and it so happened that some of the houses are partially located on the territory of a necropolis. My mother had a friend, a real Jew, and she met her future husband back in the 2000s. Well, they decided to move in together and live with this guy in a one room apartment, although the brownie was most likely an anti Semite, since he immediately disliked her. It was hard for her to live there, starting with the bad atmosphere and ending with sleepless nights, when something was still trying to strangle her. They couldn't live like that for long, one day the woman couldn't take it anymore and very quickly left that house. Then a little later she told a story that sounded like this, I worked the second shift, and my husband accordingly the first, that day he calmly woke up, got ready and went to work, and I was left home alone. Then, after some time, through my sleep I heard that my husband came back, I heard him go to the kitchen, started to rummage around there, rattle and knock, I had already completely woken up, and was just lying with my eyes closed. Then my husband decided to go to my room, I, in turn, was lying with my back to the passage, then I heard him come into the room and sat on the bed, and was silent, not moving, and I felt that the bed was a little crushed, I thought, well, let me ask what happened, why is he silent at all, I turn around, and there was no one there. I got up, called out to him, went around the apartment to look for, but he was simply not there and that's it. The door to the apartment is not locked, in the kitchen, everything is in its place. I took my mobile, and back then people already had push button phones on their hands, and I started calling my husband, he picked up the phone, asked why I was bothering him, he was working. Anyway, as it turned out, he left for work in the morning and didn't return to the house until the evening, it was unclear who and what was there. In another case, in the same area, in the neighboring house lived a family, I talked to the head of this family, he said that the apartment is funny, he says, we, people, are used to it, but our cat is not happy with such a neighborhood. Once, in the evening, a man was sitting in the kitchen drinking tea, a cat was sitting next to him. At one point, the cat fluffed up and began to hiss in the corridor in which, in fact, there was no one. The man watched with interest what would happen next, and after a couple of seconds, the cup standing on the table, simply and unpretentiously began to move to the edge of the table, after which it successfully fell to the floor and broke. The cat was shocked by the scenario, ran away somewhere far away under the closet, from where he did not get out for a couple of hours. When the builders were doing repairs in that apartment, they noticed that the construction waste they were cleaning up in the evening was scattered around the apartment in the morning. They thought maybe the owners were joking, until one day, when they were leaving work, they put a bag full of garbage in the corner, and as soon as they closed the door, they heard a loud crash coming from the apartment. They opened the door, and the bag was lying on the floor, on the opposite side from the corner, as if someone had pulled it with force. My granny lives in a new residential complex that was built in an open field. I once observed a madhouse. We were sitting in the room with her, and we heard a closet door opening and closing in the next room. There was no one else in the apartment except us, and to my surprised eyes, my granny replied, Tishka, don't be naughty. I said, Grandma what's wrong with you? She replied, this is the guy who lives in my house over there, I call him Tishka, he likes to make noise sometimes. Then she told about her grandparents who believed in such things and had their own stories. From personal experience, I encountered this many times while living with my ancestors. Their apartment is large, with many rooms and there was always enough space for everyone. We moved in when I was still level 3, my brother was 11. 
Before us, a family lived in that apartment, a father, mother, and their daughter, but a tragedy happened, the woman got pneumonia and suddenly died in intensive care. After that, life became worse for the family, the daughter went crazy and wrote this is my room, this is Yulia's room all over her room, I lived there later. Well, since the apartment was at the bottom of the market and has a solid area, we decided to leave out the backstory. After the move in, there was a madhouse, and if the adults didn't feel any problems, then life became hard for me and my brother. Some unknown bullshit prevented us from sleeping, appeared and scared us in every possible way. My brother was the first to get hit, since he was more conscientious. Once, he and his buddy were sitting and staring at the console, and they started talking about brownies and other heresy, as soon as the topic was closed, closed because my brother turned out not to believe in such things, the closet door suddenly opened by itself. Then the door to the toilet opened, although this had never happened before or after. I myself would have considered my brother a liar if I hadn't been there at that moment. After that, the light in his room turned on by itself for several nights in a row. He thought that one of the household was fooling around, but everyone was sleeping soundly, no one would have thought of it. And every night at the same time, someone clicked the switch. The brother, tired of this situation, told his mother about the Joker, the mother did not believe him and told him not to bother her. Then, a couple of minutes later, walking to his room, halfway there, in the hall, the mother saw this Joker. He was a thin man, quite tall, dressed in all black. He was sitting on a shelf and glaring at his mother. She was so shocked that she was instantly paralyzed, only her brother helped her, who responded to her and she was distracted. After that, the mother went into faith, and called the priest three times. The brother also saw this Herabora at one time, after that he himself did not stay at home until he was older. My father, like me, met this person in a dream. The uncle did not harm anyone, but made it clear who was in charge, and the priest did not influence him either. My turn came when I was eight years old, I often heard someone walking around the apartment slowly, I heard him enter my room and make noise somewhere in the kitchen with dishes. He liked to scare me, then the remote control from the drawer was not where I left it a minute ago, the TV turned on by itself. The sound of the drawer opening and closing scared the shit out of me. Physically it was in place, but judging by the sound, someone was opening and closing it over and over again. The apartment itself is not calm, it lives its own life, does not like it when someone swears at home or listens to loud music. Because then at night the household hears a symphony of sounds, like something is knocking somewhere. Once my mother went shopping, while I was sleeping at 15. Before she came, I managed to wake up, lay there staring at the phone. Then I heard my mother return, then she came into the room and said, why did you run away? It turned out that when she entered the apartment, she saw me running away from her into the room. Who she saw, I don't know. After that, on the same day, the front door to the apartment opened by itself, and to open it you need a lot of effort, a draft is excluded. Also, throughout my entire stay there, I sometimes had the same dream, in which I saw a man and a woman standing in my apartment, and in the dream I understood that they were strangers, and that they could not be here and now. That dream scared the shit out of me. Even though I have matured significantly since the bullshit, I still heard all that chaos perfectly well, I just stopped paying attention. Now, I have already moved to a rented apartment, it is much quieter, there is no noise, it is pleasant and comfortable to be in the apartment, I no longer have that dream. If anyone is interested, I can tell a couple more stories from what I heard and experienced. Of those clearly interesting and sincerely incomprehensible, I can remember the following cases. 1. I was about 9 years old, evening hour, parents were already asleep and everything seemed to be calm. But I still could not sleep, the option with sleep paralysis is excluded. 
At one point I hear the sound of the front door opening, and as if someone enters the apartment, then hangs the keys on the hook with a characteristic sound, closes the door and goes to my brother's room. It would seem that there is nothing strange here, my brother came home, but the problem is that he was physically in another city and under no circumstances could he have come to the house. I was blown away by this event, and closing my eyes ran to my parents to check what kind of asshole deigned to get into the apartment. As expected, no one was found, I got kicked for a false call and retired to the kingdom of Morpheus. Do you think, Anon, the story is over? But no. After some time, the story repeated itself almost exactly, again I heard how someone came and was in charge in the far room. Fearing the beatings from my father more than the brownie, I decided that I was imagining things and lay down further. But then the Herobora decided to make a tour of the property, moving throughout the apartment closer and closer to me. First, in the common room, the dishes in the cupboard sideboard clattered, after that, someone ran their hand along the wardrobe in the hall and with characteristic steps on the tiles, catching the door to the bathroom, sailed off to the kitchen, where they began to rearrange the cupboards and rattle the dishes. Then this something moved towards my room. There was linoleum on the floor, so all the steps were heard perfectly, and I heard how someone took a couple of steps towards me. From fear, I began to shake and held my breath. This something wanted to scare me more than anything in the world, because then I heard how someone very slowly began to open the door, either a closet or a nightstand, with a characteristic slow creak, which I later tried to repeat, but failed. The last thing I remember from that evening is how something touched my hair, that is, almost without minimal effort, as if it deliberately pressed my hair so that I would feel it. After that I passed out, or I don't remember anything. I don't know what it was, maybe a child's fantasy. 2. When I was about 18, I lived alone for some time, and of course I invited a girl to my place for a couple of days. She decided to wash her hair and went to the bathroom, although she decided not to wash herself completely, so she just stood on all fours and washed off the shampoo. And at that moment I was sitting in the room and staring at my mobile. I hear someone yelling and swearing, I come in, the light is off, I say what's going on. He asks, why did you turn off the light, I say, are you out of your mind, and she says, who do you think clicked the switch, I saw your legs. Who she saw, and what, it's not clear. 3. The biggest skeptic was my father, who said that it was all nonsense and the old soldier was not afraid of house spirits. One night, he suddenly changed his mind. He never complained about sleep paralysis, and did not know what it was. He had a dream, how he was lying on the bed at night, and through the open window into the apartment climbs that same guy in black, looks at my father and moves into the depths of the apartment. My father did not hear the words, but clearly felt, do you think you are the boss here, at this point the dream ended. After that, my father began to treat this topic more loyally. 4. A friend of mine had already managed to get married and beat the shit out of him. And he went to rented apartments. Well, the child grew up a little and moved in, he was 2 to 3 years old. And just then the family moved to a new apartment, where not long before that the grandmother had kicked the bucket. And they picked out a room for the little brat where the old lady lived. And then it became uneasy, the wife was tormented by suffocation at night, and the child could not sleep normally, he pointed his finger at an empty corner and said Baba Yaga. It is not clear whether he saw that old lady, or what it was. But in the end they quickly left there. 5. The mother was washing herself in the bathroom, nothing foreshadowed trouble, until she looked at the fogged up mirror, on which the trace of someone's palm was clearly visible. There was no one to apply it to, and it did not look like an old trace at all, the trace was too fresh and was located practically under the upper edge of the mirror, under the ceiling. I myself have seen brownies in the literal sense several times, when I was little I saw a brownie three times in my life, 
By the way, when I was moved I was tormented by sleep paralysis as a child, and one time I just lay down, sat, looked at the phone, then everything went out, I looked at the corridor and my phone had also disappeared and I was lying there a long armed creature from under the crack in the door just pulled its hand towards me, only then I woke up I was in a daze it was already night. My father said that he also saw several videos of a brownie on the very same building that my parents built, the house was sold, thank god. I had two cats, or rather one female cat and a male cat, well, the male cat died. The female cat didn't get along very well with him, they were always fighting and beating each other up. What do brownies have to do with it? It's just that after the cat died, terrible things started happening at home. I always close my room so that they, she now, wouldn't interfere with my sleep. It worked until she started banging on the door every night. By the way, she's already 13 years old, and she's also overweight, but she gets so scared of something that despite all this she jumps, runs, and tries to pull the door handle. Now she sleeps in front of the door to the balcony. And then one morning she screams at the whole apartment, meows like crazy, she started doing this often. The door to the room is closed, I think I'll go out now, calm down, and go back to sleep, but then the cat crawls out from behind the curtain. It wasn't her making those sounds. By the way, this is not the first and not the last time something like this has happened, this little poltergeist has become a part of my life, but I can't seem to film it. I just forget, and putting cameras around the house and then sorting through our long videos is a pain in the ass. So what's next? Literally a week ago there was an incident, I was sitting staring at the monitor, without headphones. I heard some noises behind the curtain to the right, I thought the cat was lying there again, the doorbell rang, my parents had come to visit, but one thing, I was met with a question. How did you know we were coming? that you even met us from the balcony in advance. 2 plus 2 equals I'm in shock, something was standing on the balcony, and this time the cat was lying on the couch in the living room. By the way, that night they stayed at my house, and I lay down on the bed and watched a movie, and I was lying in the dark watching Saw 10. Then my father pushed me from behind and asked. Why are you stomping around the house like that at night, stomping all over the apartment? But I didn't even get up, I sat and watched Kramer swallow blood in the barn hee <laughs> hee. There were a lot of other incidents in the room, I'll finish with an incident in the toilet. I'm sitting, busy with shitting, and then the light went out. I thought the fuses had blown, but no, I just clicked the switch, when I saw this and realized, the toilet was no longer needed. That's all for now. If you want I'll tell you a couple more interesting incidents, I was looking around the apartment and found a lot of interesting things, but for now, by everyone. My parents were in a civil marriage and lived in my father's apartment, where he grew up. Three room apartment, one separate room and two adjoining, so in the separate room, when my father was a teenager, his grandmother lived who had a stroke and lived out her last years there in a vegetable state, and died here. After that, my father's mother began to live in the room, who also had a stroke in old age and died in the same room. Well, by the irony of fate, when after all these events, my father began to live with my mother, he made a kind of office in that room, since he came home late from work, and so as not to wake me, he slept there. Now about the room itself, it was somehow oppressive, my mother and I were in it for no more than an hour, because it felt like someone was watching you. Periodically, things were not in their places, although no one entered the room, and my mother, who loved open doors, always tried to close it. My father was a shift worker, so he was rarely home, so this room was mostly empty in real space. But somewhere subconsciously I felt that there was someone there too. Soon my father died suddenly, surprisingly, but not in this room, and my mother, under the pretext of personal territory, forced me to move there, 
because school started and they put a table with a computer and all sorts of crap for a scale, shelves for textbooks, a desk, etc. Well, living in this room was torture for me, every night, without laughing, really every night, I dreamed of wild beasts, all sorts of frightening images and basically creepy dream plots. I still remember one, where I go from the room to the kitchen and there my mother is cooking something, then I turn into the living room and there my confused mother sits and says there is someone in the kitchen. In short, I didn't have enough life in this room for long, I managed to persuade my mother and my ala personal territory moved to the living room, and the room just stood there. Sometimes guests were put to bed there if they didn't feel like moving around at night, and the guests weren't thrilled, they said that they dreamed of wild animals and it seemed that there was someone in the room, but they attributed it to alcoholic gatherings. Then, after I came of age, the question of selling this apartment arose, my mother moved to another one, and I was left to clear the entire apartment of furniture. Over all these years, this na seemed to have taken over the entire apartment, and it was already uncomfortable to be in any corner of the house. Clearing the apartment alone was a challenge for me, I was stupidly scared, and I didn't even understand why. The house is old, the floors creaked, the wind was blowing through and you seem to understand with your mind, but this ambient only increases the accumulated tension. Therefore, during the entire stage of preparing the apartment, a friend hung out with me, since at least it was not so scary, we came together and left together. And then one day, a friend from school was driving to me, and I was already rattling boards in the apartment, well, for 10 to 15 minutes, during this time the apartment seemed to live its own life, creaked, clapped, rustled. At first I wanted to make a hero of myself, but then I thought, Nuna, even if I look like a child, I feel calmer inside. In the end, my friend and I met at the entrance under the pretext of a smoke break. They sold this apartment, the new tenants immediately started renovating, maybe, having refreshed the apartment, they drove this bogeyman away, but I don't know, I'm glad that I won't be there again. I recently had this thing happen to me, I'm lying on the floor, I spread a mattress, it's a hot summer, and I realize that I'm walking around my room in a dream, but the dream is like it's real, and I go to bed already in a dream, I feel like I'm falling asleep, my breathing suddenly gets out of order, I start to choke and in my dream I start screaming with all my might, suddenly I feel someone fiddling with the blanket, I stop screaming, I try to turn my head but nothing works, I'm just lying. There like a corpse, then the blanket jerked with force, my legs went a little to the side, and they hit the sofa, I came to consciousness from this already in reality, I was really dumbfounded then. I'll throw in some non my own pasta on the topic. TLDR, according to the old tradition, the main thing is to yell dick and bitch, as everyone on Dvatch already knows. We know about the traditional evil spirits that live in houses. House spirits, small domesticated people live next to many of us, and we recognize them, helpers and troublemakers, turning into cat shadows, protectors of the house and farm, benevolent and capricious, we also know their names, and, almost, are not afraid. But there is another fairly common group of inhabitants of our houses, which can really ruin your life. In the English-speaking world, they are sometimes called mimics, I heard that they are also called imitators. It is interesting that this is not a special class of inhabitants of the subtle world, but completely different entities, which we are trying to unite and define by exactly one feature, their behavior and manifestation. These are entities that make sounds, imitate the voices of people living, or often visiting, in the house. The same banshees, kikimoras, forest spirits can also imitate voices. But mimics imitators live next to a person, more often, directly on his territory, in the house. They most often appear in houses or large apartments, in old buildings, especially where there are basements, attics, and dark rooms. At first, mimics manifest themselves simply with some noise, rustling, 
steps, movement in an empty room. This includes, for example, cases when a sofa creaked in the next room, on which someone sat down, but the whole family is in front of your eyes, and there is no one there and cannot be. This is the sound of cat paws on the floor, while all the cats, here they are, sitting and perplexed. Another thing is that we practically do not pay attention to such things, but for mimics attention is vital. They feed on it and become stronger when they start to be noticed. And if they start to be noticed, they will also become afraid, and fear allows them to grow and gain more strength. The classic move of imitative spirits is voices. Most often, they call one of the household members with the voice of another family member. Most often, when children call their mother, a husband calls his wife, or vice versa. One woman writes that she was in the kitchen baking a pie, her hands all in dough, she could not move away, and her husband was literally straining himself, asking her to come to the living room. When she finally flew into the room covered in flour, and in rage, it was empty. And literally a couple of seconds later, the keys jingled in the lock, her husband, who had gone out to the store, returned home. Another said that her daughter was calling her from the basement. Only the mother knew very well that her daughter was playing with her friend in her room, and that's where she found them when she went to check just in case. Another one shared that her stepson refuses to visit her and her husband's house because his mother, who, of course, has never been in that house, always invites him there. And here we immediately see that there are significant differences in how imitators behave. Someone gets attached to certain people and calls them in voices that they will answer, and whether such a call can really be or not is unimportant. Someone simply imitates the voices of the inhabitants of the house. By the way, the most common case of imitators is when the sound comes from the room where the caller is located. Only he or she did not call anyone and did not ask anything. One case was described by a woman who lost her child in childbirth. She had never even heard, her daughter crying, but when she returned home from the hospital, she began to think that a baby was crying in the house. The house was located in a rural area, and the neighbors definitely did not have small children. Of course, the woman decided that she was developing psychosis, she shared with her husband, hoping that he would send her to rehabilitation. And the husband responded that he had exactly the same hallucinations and kept quiet so as not to disturb and upset his wife. Mimics are often believed to be our departed loved ones, especially the deceased or unborn children who died suddenly, loved ones who are greatly missed. But many stories about them suggest that it is not only restless human souls that can manifest themselves this way. A brownie can stamp and even purr like a cat. Sometimes strange little people can start up in the house, especially if the house is located on the outskirts, if it has closed and cluttered rooms. If there is witchcraft in the house and the space is cleaned little or rarely, it can easily pull in anyone from the subtle world, including those who treat people exclusively as food. How are mimics dangerous, besides the fact that they upset and scare? To begin with, if there were no imitations before, the house is clean, there are no closets and no strangely deceased relatives, then the appearance of such effects is a bad sign. This is a disturbance of the ether, this is how a warning from previously calm neighboring spirits may look, and sound. All these fallen books, or the sound of something falling when nothing fell, laughter, creaking, the brownie is busy, this is not good. If someone is called by name, often danger threatens this person or the one whom this person protects and would like to protect. However, this is not a danger as such, it is rather a warning about it. The sign is bad, but the impulse is useful. It is much worse if the facial expressions begin to manifest themselves maliciously, to frighten, and as the discomfort of the inhabitants of the house increases, the effects intensify, and life becomes impossible. I was told that a crazy grandmother insisted on the light being on at night, because if the light was turned off, they were whispering nearby. At first it was just about whispering, then, about prayers, then the granny said that it was growling, and then the light stopped helping. 
the grandmother was prescribed serious medications, sleep, at least apparently, was improved, a few years later the granny died, and her grandson moved into her room. With a good psyche and approximately zero level of suspiciousness. Moreover, the room had been seriously renovated, none of the grandmother's things remained. This grandson was surprised when he once heard that at night in the room someone was either rustling, or really whispering. So, of course, it is worth kicking out the imitator. They curse, loudly and aloud send to all possible obscene addresses. In no case should you show fear. They clean the premises both magically and physically, they rake out old junk, one family, who did not like that someone was supposedly having a good time in their locked basement, did such a renovation there that they got a semblance of a separate apartment, which they successfully and profitably rented out. They ring bells throughout the house, smoke sage and wormwood, hang wind chimes. There is also advice to drive old, there is an option, rusty, nails into the corners of the house. You can use construction spikes or the same parts, from rails. Sprinkle salt around the perimeter of the house. I also like the advice to remove the rug with the inscription welcome, at least this way strangers who like to scare will not stray. But the main thing, of course, is to remember and know every moment, to feel who is the boss in this house, the powerful and fearless boss. Because I have not heard of any cases of real harm from imitators, but they can easily be driven out of the house, that married couple, after some discussion, first temporarily moved in with relatives, and then completely sold the house in which sad memories lived. In the new place, they had a child, and the crying became not mysterious, but absolutely real. The grandson used the most powerful weapon of the young, indifference, and simply gave up. And the whispering stopped. Well, I haven't had a single scary story for level 20, but I do have something for this thread. My entire family claims that my great-grandmother and great-grandfather definitely had a brownie. I've been to that house many times myself, but I didn't notice anything strange, either before or after I was informed. I didn't meet my great-grandfather, but according to all the household members, including my grandfather, who was a communist to the core, an atheist and all that, in general, my great-grandfather claimed that a brownie would drag him off the stove at night. That is, literally drag him off the stove by the leg and throw him on the floor, whatever that means. They talk about it as if it were normal, but my god, that's just the tip of the iceberg. The next thing I learned about this mysterious character is that he lives in a chest that stood next to one of the beds, in which, by the way, my great-grandmother slept after my great-grandfather died, who knows if this has any significance, but let it be. And the last thing that for some reason still makes me break out in a cold sweat is this mysterious, he had three heads and three beaks like. Everyone I talked to about this said this, my great-grandmother, mother, grandfather, sister and my great-grandmother's children, two cousins. Well, that's how it is. Finally, I had the opportunity to share this shit with someone. By the way, when trying to find out more details or anything else, I get nothing more. There are a couple of stories. Here's the first one. My father told me about it when I was already a teenager, and when I told my mother about it, she said something like, he told you all this after all. My parents and I lived with a girl, she was about two to three years old. It was late my mother and I were sleeping in the room. My dad worked on a minibus, I think, and sometimes came home late, and in order not to wake my mother and me, he went to bed in another room. And so he also came home late, lay down and turned on the TV, stared at it for a while and went to bed. And at some point he decided to open his eyes, and there was someone standing in the middle of the room, he was so shocked and dove under the blanket. He thought maybe it was his imagination, crawled out again, and this black figure was still standing there, only this time it was little me sitting on his back. My dad was so shocked, 
jumped out of bed and turned on the light. He came into my room with my mother and everything was fine, I was sleeping in the crib and my mother was on her bed. After this incident, my grandmother, who had lived there before, came and said some words, like, house spirit, house spirit, come with me to the new house. The second story happened in the new house where that same grandmother lived. I was already 11 to 13 years old and my cousin and I came to her place as usual for the night. It was yesterday, the light was on in the room and my sister was with me. I was standing and throwing two smooth sea pebbles. And then, during the next throw, one of the stones suddenly rushed to the side and flew across the entire room, crashed into the closet. My sister also said, why the hell did you throw the stone like that, and I said that it was not me who threw it like that. That's how it went. 